Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to another installment in our Chapter 18 lecture series. The topic for this video is the neurohypothesis, which is another name for the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. So here we go. We've been looking at this picture on several of our videos. We have our hypothalamus and our pituitary gland. Um, I'm not sure that I pointed this out before, but you should know from your lab that you have the stalk connecting the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. That stalk is called the infundibulum. Now notice that we had the three collections of neurons, right? We had the um, neurons that are releasing the regulatory hormones controlling the adenohypophysis. We have the collection of neurons that's controlling the adrenal medullae. And then we have some neurons that are located here, and I just drew in one for simplicity. Um, so we're going to have neurons whose cell bodies are located in the hypothalamus, but their axons extend into the neurohypothesis. So I like the name neurohypothesis because it's helping us to remember this relationship that we have these neurons whose cell bodies are in the hypothalamus actually extending into the neurohypothesis and then releasing the hormones there. There are two major hormones released by the neurohypothesis. So the first one is oxytocin, which is abbreviated OXT. Oxytocin is going to talk to the uterus, uh, signaling smooth muscle contraction. So this would be involved in both uh, menses, but also um, labor and delivery. Mammary glands, so to um, to cause milk ejection during breastfeeding. And here's then one of the benefits of breastfeeding for women is that you're going to trigger the, um, actually the nursing of the infant triggers the release of oxytocin so that you get milk ejection, but also you're gonna have some oxytocin talking to the smooth muscle of the uterus, so you're helping to return um, the size of the uterus more quickly post-pregnancy with breastfeeding. And then you also see oxytocin released in both the male and the female um, during uh, sex. And we see it is especially involved in the male and the sperm ducts in the prostate gland and contribute to emission. So that's the ejection of sperm. And then the second important hormone that we see coming from the neurohypothesis is antidiuretic hormone or ADH. Now, just put this in your notes and memorize this one. This one comes back again and again and again and again and again. Okay, so we'll talk about ADH a lot. ADH, we see, basically talks to the kidney and tells the kidney to retain water. Um, and so this is one way that we're going to increase our blood pressure. If we keep any water in our body, then we're going to increase our blood volume, which is going to automatically increase our blood pressure. Also, in order to assist with this, antidiuretic hormone will talk to blood vessels and cause a vasoconstriction. So if you reduce the diameter of your vessel and you've also you know, maintained fluid there by retaining water, then you're increasing your blood pressure there even though you haven't really you know, increase the amount of blood cells um, in that case. Um, what's interesting is that alcohol will actually inhibit the production of ADH, and so this is why you drink a lot of alcohol, or even a small amount of alcohol, and you have to urinate very frequently. And that is it for now.